this is the uh, National Zoo. This is a retaining wall project. Uh, this is one part of the job. Uh, the other one's inside, but this is the one that uh, has uh, been put up for the Star Award. The length of the wall is 952 feet in length. Uh, the, the tallest part is uh, 48 feet. Uh, so it varies and you can kind of see it tapers down towards the end. Uh, this wall was critical and for this building to take the pressure off this building so it wouldn't slide into the river. Originally this wall was supposed to be cast in place, uh, which would have had its own set of challenges. So the precast is a six inch and it's basically a, basically for a better term, a veneer. And there's an air gap between the, our shotcrete wall and the precast panels and they basically stack. And you can't really tell where the horizontal joints are. They are blended in pretty well. Typical panels you think of setting up vertically. These are actually horizontal and it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. It was definitely a pretty, pretty daunting task. The biggest challenge was access. They wouldn't shut down the road. So every night with the crane operations, we'd have to bring in the crane, open up the road for the morning. So all the precasts had to be set at night. It was tough and it was during the winter, you know, like everything else, it's always the winter when you're doing your structural work. Evergreen was our painter. They're the ones that did the hand painting. It was a large scope for being hand painted. Uh, total surface area was 22,000 square feet. Each one of these stones was painted by hand. Uh, access was a huge issue for them. We had to get in here to get some uh, lifts in here, articulating lifts. We also had to swing stages and then also ladder work. And then up at the top, we had to build scaffolds. So it was like a mix of every type of access you could think of. We had this painting by number thing that was kind of a unique concept we came up with. And that was the decorators go through and tell the painter what color they wanted the block. So they went back and they, they would fill in and then the decorators then would come again. Once the painters made all the blocks different colors, they'd come in again and then blend it, make it look natural. They didn't want you to be able to see any joints in the precast panels, um, except for the vertical ones every 30 feet. Those were acceptable, but um, horizontally, they didn't want any repetition, nothing, no pattern. So um, that was one of the challenges was making it consistent but random at the same time. I'm on a typical day when you came out, they had two swing stages hanging from the top. They looked like window washers. Um, they would have two men in each. Then they also had a ground crew that was coming along the foundations and because the, the landscaping of course wasn't here so they were able to stand on the foundations of the wall and paint from the ground up. And then they also had um, a lift that they were working off of. I think when I look at this wall, I'm most proud of the size and how natural it looks and how much it blends in. I think that um, there's a certain look that the zoo wants to keep. I think that um, it really does a great job of being part of the park. There was a lot that went into, we had to do a full mock-up for the owner. Um, there was a lot that went into the approval process. So uh, one of the things I'm proud of is our team and our subcontractors and how you know consistent and thorough we were and this whole time we just kept Smithsonian's goal in mind that what the product they wanted and that's what we kept our priority. Sometimes it got frustrating and tedious but we just kept at it. Um, they came out every morning to inspect what we've done and sometimes they said we want a little more brown and it's kind of vague but you know say like, okay next time we'll do a little more brown yeah <laughs>